Go ahead, go ahead. I remember the story. Absolutely. That is the recourse. That is the recourse. We, we live in the age of information, and the effect that that's had on our deen is that we treat, we treat ilm as information. So just like if you don't find the information for something on one website, you go to a, another website. That's the way it works. So we're doing the same thing with our ilm as well. It, it, when the ilm has little to nothing to do with information very little to do with information. It's not about the information. It's about the experience of it, about how it enlightens you, how it guides you, how it how it molds you. That's the purpose of ilm. And that is primarily through being with the teacher, staying with the teacher, learning from the character of a teacher. And that's very, very important. So we need to, we shouldn't even be concerned with speakers. We need to be concerned with teachers. We need teachers is what we need. And we all need to become students. I tell everybody, like what I said earlier in the Q&A session we had today, and that works both ways. Oh, we can't find any good teachers. I can point out plenty of good teachers that will tell you they couldn't find good students. Because when Imam Umar Suleiman and Brother Noman Ali Khan came, everybody paid attention. And then when they went home back to their real, to, to, to a teacher, somebody that they have access to, Right, somebody that they don't live halfway across the country from, somebody that they didn't just see in three sessions, somebody they could literally sit with four days a week and they could study. All right, then they didn't care, they didn't pay attention. There, there's nothing more disturbing than have, seeing when I see a good qualified imam or a teacher in a community, and people are sitting there. Even first of all, there's not people attending his class or his lecture. Even when they are attending, they're not sitting there with a notebook and a pen and they're not taking notes. Act like a student. Develop the mentality of a student. It's very, very, very important. That's the first thing. And then second issue, the re second part of the remedy of that is, what type of knowledge are we going after and are we seeking? There's a hierarchy. There's a priority, a list of priorities in terms of what you seek knowledge about. It begins with the Book of Allah, the Quran and the life of the Messenger Not even so much as the text of Hadith, but just Seerah. We need Seerah. We need the life of the Prophet. So first, in, in, firmly ground yourself in Qur'an and Seerah. And the next step I would say would be the basic fiqh that you need to live your day-to-day -day life. But that's where that trusted teacher comes in. Like, how do I do this? How do I do that? You don't need to be concerned with different, what are the different madhahib on this? What are their evidences? What are their usul? What's the stronger opinion? In the, in, the, in the brother's Q&A session, somebody asked me, what's the stronger opinion about this? I said, first thing, there is no such thing as a stronger opinion. There's either information or a lack thereof, but there is no such thing as a stronger opinion. Absolutely not. There are multiple practices of the Prophet And they all categorize as sunnah. Now, there is eventually something that's going to come along that is not right, but we'll never be able to make that distinction. You and I will never be able to tell, but that's wrong. Because we're not qualified to do that. That's when we have to go to our teachers. And talking about that note of getting serious knowledge, you like to listen to speeches from Imam Umar Suleiman, Brother Noman, Ustad Norman, or even myself. The people that we learn from, you never heard their name ever before. Yeah. They have no YouTube videos. They have zero hits on YouTube. <laughs> they have no website. They ever think about that? And they were fountains of knowledge. Unbelievable people. Absolutely. You know, I want to mention something that happened at last year's conference. The subhanAllah really, really, really upset me. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm going to mention it. <laughs> We've got a rematch in two hours. But anyway, um, so, you know, something that really upset me, subhanAllah. I remember this session. So it was myself and it was uh, Brother Wissam and it was Sheikh Muhammad Iqbal Nadmi. And Sheikh Muhammad Iqbal Nadwi, and I shared this with somebody, I was really upset that day. Sheikh Muhammad Iqbal Nadwi was in the middle of myself and Brother Wissam. And when I finished, people, when he got up, while he was speaking, while he was starting his speech, the room cleared out. And then whenever people realized that Brother Wissam's turn was coming, the room was filling up again. And I was like, look, subhanAllah, 
we're just, I mean, seriously, compared to these guys, this guy's a PhD from Umar al-Qur'an. I'm a joke. I'm not a scholar. I'm not even a student of knowledge compared to this person. Neither is Brother Wissam, neither is Brother Nurman, and I know that he's, you know, he has no problem saying that. We are, we are not scholars here. You know, we're trying to just, just at least, I mean, at least the goal that, that I see from, from whenever we speak is that, inshallah ta'ala, you would take your knowledge more seriously and you would go learn from real scholars. You know, like, you've got people like Dr. Salah, you've got people like Dr. Hatim al-Hajj. Some of you guys have had Dr. Hatim al-Hajj. We were having, you know, a conversation some of Dr. Hatim is a PhD in fiqh and a physician, a genius, a genius of a scholar. But because he speaks in monotone, his lectures are mostly empty. So are we interested in speakers or are we interested in scholarship? Okay, so we should be interested in scholarship. All right, these are, this is just hype. All right, what's, what's real? And I mean, I, I, trust me, whenever you go to some of these conferences, I remember once in Texas Dawah Convention, uh, Dr. Salah al Sawi behind the, the closed doors, was giving a halaqa of tazkiyah to the speakers. And you imagine the Sheikh Walid and, and you know, the speakers that we listen to, Sheikh Yasir, everybody's sitting on the floor and he's sitting on a chair and giving a lecture. And that was such a powerful image for me because if he's at a conference and he's speaking, he's not going to have but five, six people in the room. But if his students are speaking because they're better speakers, they're going to have a, a packed room. So we have to, I mean, we have to re really think about that. Are we really serious about scholarship or just being entertained and amused? But uh, one thing, one thing, this is a small sh session and this is a private session. I really appreciate Mama Omar being very candid and just giving it to y'all like it is. Because um, sometimes we need to hear it like it is. But I'll just add one last thing on top of that though, is nevertheless, all of you being here and whatever time you've spent and whatever sessions you've sat in, it's still of benefit, mashallah. It's better than where you could have been. And uh, we should never demean, we should never degrade any level of work. No, and this is serious. I know I know we all feel this way. Brother Numan has said this multiple times about like um, how sometimes going back to the conferences over and over again, like the MSA conferences started developing like an empty feeling because it was just sort of like the recycled feeling over and over again. So mashallah, you guys seem like you're stu serious students and that's why we're talking to you like this. But don't ever make the mistake of degrading somebody else who's excited to be at the conference because that's the first step for that person. Every little facet of operation, every little facet or every little um, scene that we have going on in terms of the in terms of Muslims and the Islamic scene, um, whether they be conferences or just the MSA get together or the halaqa or the class or the intensive and the seminar, all that stuff, it's all for different segments, different demographics of the community. And inshallah, somebody's benefiting. You just have to make sure that you are constantly pushing and motivating yourself to go forward, inshallah, and grow past the limit. And that's why Imam Omar is trying to remind you guys that you're here at a conference. Now let's move past conference phase and get serious about learning, inshallah. Um, you just mentioned that you said that the scholarships, I was wondering, uh, you mentioned that you should go for scholarships in high school like this, in high school speakers. What can we do to find scholarships? I got one. Learn Arabic. I don't care where. I don't care how. You'll have access to scholars. Absolutely right. Just take it seriously. If you if you want to head down that path, fulfill the prerequisite. Yep. The key. Op the door opens up after the key.